In a city of bright lights where anything is possible. No limits, no curfews, 24 hour trains, cars. You can shop till you drop here. This free spirited lifestyle that we live as New Yorkers, the lifestyle that we love. So many restaurants, new hot spots, everywhere we turned is a new option. That's what we're known for. That's why people come here. It never ends, left, right. There's always something that catches our eye and we go for it because we just can't get enough of what we have. There's always more and that's why we continue. We've shaped our lives in a way that we can pursue our desires, our passions, our dreams. But by wanting more, do we know what we're truly doing? By wanting more, we are leaving less space for us to breathe. The more we want, the less we have. It's only human to want to have more, but it has to be sustainable. What comes along with consumerism, it's a two-sided coin. On the other side is wastefulness. So consumerism, it creates to, for people to buy. And wastefulness is the other end of that because we constantly feel the need to replace the things that we have that aren't to standard. Like you've seen people who obsess about the newest iPhone 10, iPhone whatever, I don't even know which one they're up to at this point. But on the end of that, like sure, it's not wrong to buy things in itself, but what happens when you buy things? What happens to the old items? They get thrown out and we produce massive amounts of waste and companies are picking up on this. They know that, that people will go buy new stuff. So what they're starting to do is they're starting to make commodities they produce become obsolete in a short amount of time, which is called planned obsolescence. So, like, phones, for example, like iPhones specifically, I don't mean to call it any Apple users, but I, Apple is notorious for this. If you've had, like, an older iPhone, you realize that the more and more the phone, up, there are more and more updates released, the less functional your old phone will be. And that's on purpose, because they want you to go out and buy a new phone. So instead of letting you decide when to buy a phone, they'll take the steering wheel and they'll make it so you have to buy one. Public campaigns put a lot of the emphasis on what can the individual do? What can you do to save the planet? But they don't really talk about like what your community can do for this, to save the planet. And I guess on an individual scale, I'd say the most important thing to do would be to get involved politically. Because although you can go vegan, you can go, you can like cut cars out of your life, you can cut anything that connects you to the capitalist uh, consumer lifestyle out of your life, you can do all that. But regardless, these companies, these mega corporations are still going to be producing like 80% of the world's greenhouse gases, regardless of if sing one single person opts out, they're not going to stop on your, on your watch. So. What you can do is get involved politically, get involved in the media, get involved in that, because these places have a lot of influence over our lifestyle. Me turning down my air conditioner or changing my light bulb is diverting my attention away from saying the corporations that are doing the massive problems and all the politicians that are giving them a free pass are really the problem. But they don't want us pointing to them if we're busy thinking, oh, I could just change my light bulb and I, you know, help do doing my part and stuff. And it's like, it's it's not an, it's not an individual thing. Um, we have to really be shifting how the economy works and shifting, you know, access to.